Cara Reid, welcome to episode 15 of the Suffolk County Music Service Alumni Series. It's lovely to see you, Cara, and to have you with us. Thank you for sharing the time. You are uniquely placed in our series because you do a job that no one else in the series does. So I'm really looking forward to speaking to you and thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Gosh, well, I suppose I was probably 12 or 13, maybe. I really enjoyed playing. I played the flute primarily and played quite a lot as a teenager. And although I think I always knew I didn't want to play, I think I knew reasonably early on that I, that I wanted to, to do something with music. Um, I certainly remember having piano lessons up to grade five, finding it really hard and giving up. Um, and then go, went, to, went back and did grade six because all the unis oh. I wanted to apply for wanted grade six. Uh -huh. okay. So um, I, I went back and did that once I knew probably, you know, I suppose what would be about, about year 10, that that's kind of what I wanted to do. So yes, yeah, so like I say, I played a lot, but I never really wanted to be a player. I mean, not really. I, I did a lot outside of school anyway, a lot of playing youth orchestras and other orchestras. And, oh, I took part in, you know, ad hoc operas in different places, you know, through conductors that I knew. So I, and I loved doing that and I did it because I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think anything changed in that way because I don't think I could have done any more. Um, okay. Quite honestly, I, I knew I didn't, like I say, I knew I wouldn't be playing professionally because I knew I didn't have the right mindset for doing that. I didn't want okay. to practice eight hours a day. Um, like I say, I love playing, but that was never really on my radar. And I, and I knew honestly that I wasn't good enough. I was, you know, enjoying what I was doing and I was pretty good for the age I was sure. um, and good enough to enjoy it a lot. But, but, but yes, I don't think anything really changed. I was doing as much as I could. Yes. I mean, I loved it. And like I say, at uni, there are opportunities to do all sorts of things, um, yeah. you know, playing and taking part in admin and <laughs> doing, practical stuff. So I just, yeah, I did it all. I, I did what I could, everything I could to, to take advantage of those opportunities that were there. Industry. So I, I knew I wanted to study music and again, okay. I didn't want to be a performer, so I didn't go down the conservatoire route. So I did a traditional academic music degree. Um, I did do performance modules as part of that. Um, so I went to Leeds and I did a music degree um, and also, this becomes relevant later, I studied in my first year, I also did a year of Italian. You have to, you had to at that point do a second subject. So I did Italian, um, having also studied at school, A-levels in French and German, as well as music. And that does, like I said, that does become relevant later on. So at Leeds, again, I played a lot. I sang in choirs, I played in orchestras and chamber ensembles. And during my second year, I was um, a member of the University Union Music Society Symphony Orchestra. So um, I became orchestra manager during my second year. So I was involved in the organisation and sort of orchestra management, I suppose. Um, and all of that involves from the basic setting up of the orchestra to hiring music and booking venues and booking extra players and stuff like that. So that's when I became involved in that side of things and that's when I sort of my mind sort of turned to perhaps wanted to go into orchestra management um, and that was what I had intended to do uh, again you know things happen don't they of um, course opportunities come along different opportunities so that that, <laughs> well, that isn't quite the road I went down um, but that's certainly what I was kind of aiming for when I was at uni so, yeah so after working at Snape for a couple of years after graduation I decided to change tack slightly I've said that um, when I had a temporary job first of all at uh, Albright Snape I was assisting the editor of the program book uh, which was something I really really enjoyed so so after I'd done a few years there I actually went to work for a classical record company um, in the art department so I was a literary editor so okay. I commissioned sleeve notes and I put together CD booklets um, for the CD releases. Um, and that sort of goes slightly back. Obviously, a music background was essential because 
that's what we were doing. Um, and also, as I said, I, I, I loved languages. So I did French and German at school and then Italian again for a year at uni. So that was really, really useful because we used to commission translations of seed notes into French and German. We did um, quite a lot of opera releases um, and we would always include the libretto. Often that was sung in Italian. So I was proofreading in, in those languages as well as in English. Um, so I did that role for full time um, office space for about five years before I left and family. But that was something I picked up. I think my daughter was about a year old. The same company I had worked for um, offered me freelance work. Okay. So in fact, so I did that job on a freelance basis for about 12 or 13 years. Right. Um, so, so like I said, that was a that was slightly different tack. So still mm -hmm. in classical music, mm -hmm. still absolutely have to have a music degree, but again, just something else that, that you can lead into. So I enjoyed that a lot. Um, and, and like I said, that, that was, uh, yeah, a really good time. Yeah. And another example of how musical skills can mesh beautifully with, in your case, language skills. Yeah. And, and lead you into an, a, another completely different area that you wouldn't necessarily have predicted yeah. when you were back at back at uni. Uh, that's quite a tricky one. I mean, I suppose. Mm. Uh, I don't feel I've made many sacrifices, but of course you have to make choices. Of course. Um, obviously sacrifices has a sort of negative connotation and, and I've made choices throughout my my career I suppose you know in music you don't work nine to five generally Wh whatever you're doing as a performer or in admin or anything else you don't work nine to five so that I suppose it, in itself is a sacrifice mm -hmm. but it does bring with it other advantages um, I'm now a freelancer so uh, to some extent I can you know choose when I work or or, or when I take holiday or stuff like that but equally I need to work so I I base my life around that and make choices accordingly and that's that's I think I, I don't think I've sacrificed anything anywhere really majorly but I've made choices around what I want to do and what's best for me and what's best for my children I've got two grown-up children um, so that has had a bearing on the work I have chosen to do but I do feel very lucky to be where I am now, doing what I am now. Yeah, I, I, and I'm sure, I suspect that most people will answer the same way, which is that, uh, I know it's a cliche, but to some, to some extent you make your own luck, don't you? Mm -hmm. And it is being in the right place at the right time. And I think lots of people are like that, whether it's in music or any other career, uh, any other career, I think, if you take opportunities and make yourself useful and helpful, then luck will be on your side because people will see what you're doing. And if you're doing it well and enthusiastically, then, yeah, opportunities arise. And it is, yeah, I mean, it often is being in the right place at the right time. And like I say, I ended up doing something which I hadn't quite planned to do because opportunities arose, which I took and which then led to a slightly different path to the one which I'd anticipated taking. Career. I mean, I suppose that again comes down to the whole luck thing. When mm -hmm. I um, finished at uni, I lived at home for a bit while I tried to look for a job. Um, and, you know, when you're looking for your first job, you I mean, don't take anything that comes along, but you know the kind of thing you're looking for. And if something vaguely in that sphere comes along, you go for it. So I mm -hmm. ended up I ended up working actually at Snape. That was my first okay. job um, uh, a long time ago. Um, and that was genuinely a coincidence. I, I mean, I did know friends from uni who were working at Snape already or at Opera. Okay. Um, so I knew that there were parts open there. And, and, and so, so that was very useful. Um, but like I said, I mean, a lot of it, again, we're going back to the whole right time, right place, mm -hmm. slight element of luck. It, it, I, I have stayed in Suffolk and there are, yeah, there are lots of reasons why. But that's not to say if something hadn't come up somewhere okay. else that I would have gone. Um, but there is, yeah, there is a big draw here because 
particularly where I live very, very close to Snape, there's a lot of music going on. Yeah. And that's, yeah, partly luck, I suppose. But yeah, it, it's certainly been great because, you know, my family aren't too far away. So I haven't had to, I suppose that's a sacrifice I haven't had to make, um, is, is to move away from from wider family. Um, and yeah, luck that, that there's so much going on. I mean, I think you have, you, yeah, perseverance. Okay. <laughs> you don't always get where you want to be the first time of trying. I've done um, several different things. When I first started to work at Snape, um, my first, I had two temporary jobs which ran concurrently over one summer. So I was working as an assistant to the programme book editor for the Auburn Festival, um, which I was responsible for collating proofs and proofreading and getting information together. And then as a concert manager for the Auburn Festival itself that year. Um, and, you know, you, you've got to jump in. You've got to be happy to get stuck in. You've got to talk to people. You've got to be friendly. You've got to be helpful. Um, and, you know, luck may not be on your side the first time. Like I say, I started off with two temporary jobs, but at the end of that, I'd clearly done an okay job because I was offered a permanent job. And, and that's that's how I came to, to have a permanent job, um, you know, after graduation, mm -hmm. after two temporary jobs doing, doing slightly different things. Not what I planned to do, but the opportunity came up, I took it, uh, and that's what sort of started it all off. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really. Okay. Um, I mean, we do all sorts at Snape, which is primarily where I work. So, um, as you know, there'll be everything from, you know, piano recitals to string quartets, classical music to jazz and folk and dance and opera and all sorts of things. I mean, from a practical point of view, it differs not one bit. Okay. Um, some of the music clearly I enjoy more, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, it. it I'm, I'm working. I don't get to listen to the concerts because I have to be backstage. Um, but, you know, it's just great. Me the people are different, obviously. Um, and sometimes the attitude and expectations are a bit different. But, you know, during everything, I'm there for meet and greet, make sure everyone's happy, make sure it runs smoothly. And yeah, I mean, clearly some concerts and events are more enjoyable than others, but it's basically the, the same job, whatever we're doing. I, I think, as I think probably so, as some other people have said in their interviews before, if, if an opportunity is offered to you, take it. Go out and try and find opportunities. If you are helpful and you are friendly and, you know, you get on with people, those are the, the best qualifications you can have. Um, I know from one of your previous interviews, one of um, your not very former um, youth orchestra members, Nathan, mm -hmm. has done some work at Snape and he's come back and done more, having come as a HES student which is an opportunity available for young people to come and help during the Auburn Festival each year. Um, and yeah, he made himself helpful. He, you know, having played in orchestras and in bands, he knew the kind of thing that was required organisationally um, and made himself really useful, um, but was, like I say, friendly and helpful and efficient um, with it. You know, not pushy, yeah. but just, you know, the, the, the right mixture of, of qualities. Yeah, Nathan. I mean, Nathan cited cited the Hess experience and the Albert yeah. as a seminal moment in his mm. in his development, um, and and that's obviously somebody who fully intends to go into music administration yeah. for his, for his career. So, what an important role that played. I think it really depends what you want to do. Um, okay. I mean, Snape, for example, has always been really good for entry level jobs. Um, and, you know, there is a work experience scheme. I think there's a lot more available now than there was when I was first applying for jobs. There mm -hmm. are internships now and a lot more work experience placements available, which weren't around when I was doing it. You know, we didn't have, we, there wasn't the internet when I was job searching yeah, to right. start with. So the, there's there's a lot you can do. I mean, I think you have to appreciate not everybody will be able to afford to do all of these yeah. things. Um, but 
some experience is better than no experience. If you're if you're living somewhere at home and there's a local orchestra, offer to help. You know, get some experience, even if it's not paid, um, because when employers are looking for people, some experience of volunteering is better than none at all. You know, you can say you're interested until the cows come home, but if you haven't done anything about it, you're you're up against people who have. So I think just be keen and enthusiastic and try and do what you can, accepting sure. that there will be limitations. Yeah. Uh, Cara, thank you so much for joining us. We've touched on some really new and different areas to our other interviews yeah. there. I'm sure our students will really appreciate hearing your unique vantage point. Uh, so once again, thank you for sharing your time and best wishes for the future. Great. Thanks very much. Nice to talk to you.